political parties this time tried all their best uh, to try and address matters that arose from the party nominations. I want to say they were also better organized in terms of uh, they were able to say exactly where the, their party nominations will be. They give timelines, they also give the election, they give to us the elections boards and uh, organs. They told us the method by which they will according to the amended law. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were better organized and better prepared for party nominations. And uh, an indication of that is that uh, uh, in 2017, we had about 306 disputes filed and, uh, at, at the tribunal, and about 300 plus also filed at the IBC. Some of them, of course, coming from registration of candidates, but some coming from a uh, mm -hmm. party nomination. This time around, when I last checked last week with the PPDT, there were about 110 mm -hmm. uh, disputes filed. So that alone is an indication that things were better comparably. Uh, we saw that uh, the dispute, uh, internal dispute dissolution mechanism of political parties uh, spring into action mm -hmm. and there were so many issues that were solved at the party level. But going forward, I think uh, it is important. One thing that I have checked, because the Office of Registrar monitored the nomination, one of the issues that probably we still feel that uh, need to be looked uh, is especially the strengthening of the party processes, the internal dispute resolution mechanism, mm -hmm. and also try to plan, uh, to, to do timely planning, uh, so that uh, parties are not rushing the, the last minute. I think also we need to uh, to really guide, have guidelines of, on uh, negotiations and uh, consensus. There should be proper guide, guidelines on, on uh, those particular aspects, which are allowed by the law uh, through consensus and all that. Uh, but then we need proper guidelines so that uh, finally, at the end of the day, Kenyans feel comfortable that uh, a process was completed and mm -hmm. well done. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah, but tell me about because there's there's actually a challenge that has been filed by the, uh, at the High Court. I don't know how far it has gone mm -hmm. in terms of um, the political party registers that mm -hmm. are used for uh, during the nominations. Mm -hmm. And I remember taking part in covering some of them, and you find that the register being used there looks like what IBC had in 2017. Mm -hmm. So for political parties that did not use their party registers to conduct the nominations, what is the legal position of those, of the outcome of those, those primaries? Now, you know, that one, unless it's proven, that they did not use the, the party membership register, mm -hmm. then uh, you cannot really pin and pin them mm -hmm. unless you have you have proof uh, but one important thing is that we certified the registers and give each and every political party for using party nominations and also to submit to the electoral commission for mm -hmm. purposes of uh, regulating the same uh, uh, party nominations mm -hmm. so uh, to us, we have no proof that uh, parties never used. So, exactly. but, but okay, fine. Th yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. But hypothetically, based on what the law says, uh -huh. who should take part in a political party nomination? It is the party members, based on the law. And so, if if someone who is not a member of that political party takes part in the primaries, mm -hmm. what would be the opinion of the register of political parties in terms of how tenable that outcome is? I will not talk about the outcome more. I will talk more of uh, whether uh, the right thing has been done. If you participate in a party nomination that does not, where you, you are not a member, then you are committing an offence. Even you as a person, why are you going to participate mm. in party nominations that you do not? Okay. Yeah. 